guys, filling in for Alex here because he's trash, this is Abel Stone narrating for you. Before we start this video, I'd just like to say that this is a very big fandom with a lot of excellent writers. We've asked for the permission to use some work from meta writers. Please go visit and support these people because they put in a lot of hard work and dedication. Links in the description. Ah yes, Sherlock. 200 years after its conception and people in Victorian England questioning the character's sexuality, people are still questioning the character's sexuality. And you know what? It's about time we got a response. I am not gay. Well, well, you didn't say you were straight either. Sherlock, at least the BBC version, is about a man named John Watson who has returned from the war in Afghanistan. He's really bored with his life and, as a result, takes up being flatmates with Sherlock Holmes. Together they go on wild heterosexual adventures and solve crimes together. Many fans of the show have one question. Why the hell are there only three episodes every 50 years? What the hell? They also ask, are Sherlock and Watson gay? Are they gay for each other? What? That's where I come in. Let's take it one step at a time. Sherlock is a recluse. He seems to not have a heart, seems to be a stoic creature of logic. Like Spock. However, John Watson brings out the best in Sherlock. John Watson, you keep me right. John becomes his best friend. He feels compassion for John. He even acknowledges that John is an expert in people, while Sherlock is an expert in everything else, I guess? They owe each other their lives. But John has always questioned Sherlock's sexuality. In fact, when they first meet, it's one of the first things to come out. You don't have a girlfriend then? Girlfriend? No, not really my area. All right. Do you have a boyfriend? Which is fine, by the way. I know it's fine. So you've got a boyfriend? No. Right, okay. <laughs> You're unattached, just like me. No. John assumed that Sherlock was gay when he said that women weren't his area, and Sherlock didn't even deny the question of having a boyfriend right away. Instead, he went right away to saying he knows it's fine. Now we know Sherlock doesn't have a boyfriend, but he went straight into saying that having a boyfriend is okay. And since when has Sherlock openly approved normal human relationships when he usually feels they're a waste of time? Notice the question isn't, are you straight, or are you gay? The question was if he had a girlfriend or boyfriend. We don't know if Sherlock is straight. In fact, with the, women are not really my area, most people take that to assume that Sherlock is gay. He didn't say boyfriends weren't his area either, did he? And then Sherlock goes on to reject John coming on to Sherlock by saying, John, um... I think you should know that I consider myself married to my work and what I'm flattered by your no. interest, I'm really not looking for anything. No, I'm not asking. No. I'm just saying, it's all fine. Sherlock assumed that John was interested. Sherlock isn't stupid. He knows when people are romantically attached to him. He knows the signs of attraction. He's the master of body language and deduction. So why did he read John as coming on to him? Maybe it was because he was. And many will say, but Sherlock isn't good with people. June 3rd of John Watson's blog describes one case that Sherlock and John had where a woman named Sabrina, who was secretly attracted to women, wanted a divorce from her husband to pursue true love. Here's a quote. From the moment Mary had joined us, Sabrina had unconsciously shown signs of attraction towards her. And, as he, Sherlock, pointed out, they're signs he's used to seeing in women when they're looking at him. So he does recognize these signs of attraction, huh? Tumblr user 221boylove used June 3rd of John's blog as another example of Sherlock defending queer couples as well. Even though Sherlock makes it seem relationships are nonsense, he still somehow finds a way to defend non-straight couples. 221boylove connects this with John and Mary, and how John might be in the same situation as that woman. You can read 221boylove's full meta by clicking the link below in the description. Let's also think about the beginning of the restaurant scene. When Angela first brought John and Sherlock their food, he assumes that John is his date. Sherlock, anything on the menu, whatever you want, free, on the house for you and for your date. Do you want to eat? I'm not his date. And Sherlock brushes it off and doesn't even comment about it. But why would Angelo assume John is Sherlock's date? Surely Angelo and Sherlock have a long history together since Angelo and Sherlock are both very friendly to each other. So after all these years, Angelo made the conclusion that Sherlock is attracted to men, and Sherlock doesn't even deny it, he just went with the flow. Who else has known Sherlock for a long time? His landlady, Mrs. Hudson, and she assumed that Sherlock and John were a couple too. I've met someone. <gasps> oh, lovely. Yeah, we're getting married. Well, I'm going to ask anyway. So soon after Sherlock? Mm, well, yes. What's his name? It's a woman. A woman? Yes, of course it's a woman. <laughs> you really have moved on, haven't you? Mrs. Hudson, how many times 
Sherlock was not my boyfriend. Live and let live. That's my motto. With all these people close to him staunchly pointing out that Sherlock is gay and Sherlock not denying it, what should the audience assume? Is the audience, is John supposed to assume he's straight? In this context, I don't think so. And this is only the first episode. The first episode! After a few episodes, also known as the entire season, their relationship develops a little more. They're starting to become friends with a lot of sexual tension and eye sex. Dear God, is there a lot of eye sex? I mean, Sherlock talks to John when John's not even there. Like, John's become an ingrained part of his life, and Sherlock needs John to survive. There's no point in my leaving the flat for anything less than a seven. We agreed. I go back. Show me the grass. When did we agree that? We agreed it yesterday. Stop! Go, sir. I wasn't even at home yesterday. I was in Dublin. It's only my fault you weren't listening. Shut up! You just carry on talking when I'm away. I don't know. How often are you away? And when Moriarty, Sherlock's evil big bad enemy, is doing his big bad plan, he uses John as Sherlock's sensitive spot. Moriarty is an evil genius. He knows how to get to people. He knew to use John because of the affection Sherlock has for him. I would burn <laughs> out of you. I have been reliably informed that I don't have one. But we both know that's not quite true. And also this happens. All right. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah. I'm glad no one saw that. Hmm? You ripping my clothes off in a darkened swimming pool, people might talk. What are you thinking about, John? You're so defensive when it comes to people seeing you as gay. I'm not gay! The moment they officially become friends is when they're arguing about dumb stuff and Sherlock says, I don't have friends. Nah. And the next day, after realizing what he'd said, Sherlock tells John, This is what I said before, John. I meant it. I don't have friends. Just got one. This is huge for Sherlock. He's acknowledging that he's subject to emotions and thinks of John as at least a friend. For now. He didn't acknowledge or give in to emotions like this before, but we're seeing a change in Sherlock. The next piece comes a lot later in the series when John is going to be married to Mary. Sherlock is, of course, John's best man, but feels a pang of jealousy, like the end of an era is over. Know what Mrs. Hudson says. Action. My best friend, Margaret, she was my chief bridesmaid. We were going to be best friends forever. We always said that, but I hardly saw her after that. What well, usually biscuits? I've run out. At the shops. She cried the whole day saying, oh, it's the end of an era. I'm sure the shop on the corner is open. She was probably right, really. I remember she left early. I mean, who leaves a wedding early? The writers are telling us what Sherlock feels. It's definitely some sort of jealousy. Whether it be platonic or romantic is a question for the audience. Skipping ahead once again to the end of season three, Sherlock and John are saying goodbye and it's emotional. Sherlock decides to leave with final words. There's a huge romantic buildup. John, there's something I should say. I've meant to say always and I never have. Since it's unlikely we'll ever meet again, I might as well say it now. Sounds like he's about to confess his love for John, right? Like he's about to say something significant? Here's what Sherlock actually says. Sherlock is actually a girl's name. Oh, he, he made a joke. One of those rare Sherlock jokes. Even if it wasn't a full-fledged love confession, it's still significant. Even just the joke bit shows us that Sherlock is letting out some of his humanity, something he only does with John. <laughs> Back in your palace. <clears throat> John also has a similar scene where his therapist asks him to say what he wanted to say to Sherlock before he died. He can't.
the stuff that you wanted to say, but didn't say it. Yeah. Say it now. Oh. Sorry, I can't. What did he want to say? So when they shake hands, Sherlock gets on a plane. Long story short, somehow his enemy Moriarty is back or something, even though we saw him shoot himself? So Sherlock decides to take drugs and go into a Victorian dreamland in his mind. Take note that everything happening in this Victorian dreamland is coming from Sherlock. It's his head. Why are you talking like this? Why are you so determined to be alone? Why do you need to be alone? The brain without a heart. The calculating machine. I write all of that, Holmes, and the readers lap it up, but I do not believe it. Damn it, Holmes, you are flesh and blood, you have feelings, you have... You must have... Impulses. The whole intention of his mind palace thing is to figure out the Moriarty trouble. So why is John suddenly asking him all these questions about libido? And John isn't even John. This is Sherlock, as John, telling himself he must have urges. Later in the same episode, this happens. <laughs> I am your weakness! I keep you down! Every time you stumble, every time you fail, when you're weak, I am there! At the end, it's always just you and me! <laughs> Professor, if you wouldn't mind stepping away from my friend, I do believe he finds your attention a shade annoying. So if Moriarty is his weakness bringing him down, who's his strength? Who's the man that will always be there for him, who's there right now? Oh look, it's John Watson! Now let's take a look at the next clip. Ugh, why don't you two just elope, for God's sake? You'd think this is just Moriarty being Moriarty and mocking John and Sherlock, but remember, this is all a creation of Sherlock's mind, so Moriarty is Sherlock, or some part of Sherlock. Never mind that everyone in the real world makes gay jokes about him and John, but apparently so does Sherlock's subconscious. There's a part of Sherlock that wants him and John to elope, or at least somehow his mind just came up with the idea. Now, let's see. How about John? What is there to suggest that John is gay or bisexual or just in love with Sherlock? Well, he's definitely not gay. I'm not actually gay. But he's not straight either. As I pointed out earlier, John is very conscious of these things. You ripping my clothes off in a darkened swimming pool, people might talk. Where does this hyper-awareness of people thinking he's gay come from? Has he always been this way? Tumblr user Chewing wrote a meta theorizing that John's father was homophobic or abusive. John does have a lesbian sister, and there are hints on John's blog and in the show that his father or the authority figures in John's life weren't too nice to John. It explains why John is so quick to defend his sexuality. Please go read Chewing's meta to learn more about the whole idea. Who is Sherlock to John? Certainly John acknowledges that they're best friends, but why is Sherlock so special to John? You see, before John and Sherlock met, John was a loner with no life. He also had a psychosomatic pain that came out of his feeling pathetic. But then... Then he met Sherlock. Sherlock brought out the adventure in John. John's cane, a representation of the dull and pathetic way he saw himself, was left behind the moment he and Sherlock went out on an adventure. Sherlock changed him for the better. He's even willing to die for Sherlock. In the first season, remember the pool scene? Well, John was willing to die to save Sherlock's life. Sherlock, run! <laughs> From the beginning, John suspects that Sherlock is... not heterosexual just confused about his sexuality overall. But John always asserts that he himself is definitely not gay. I am not gay. Not that he isn't bisexual, that he isn't attracted to Sherlock, but just not gay. Irene Adler confronts him about this. You jealous? We're not a couple. Yes, you are. There. I'm not dead. Let's have dinner. Who, who the hell knows about Sherlock Holmes, but for the record, if anyone out there still cares, I'm not actually gay. Well, I am. Look at us both. What Irene is saying here, asserting, is that John and Sherlock are a couple. She doesn't even deny it, she just says, Yes, you are. John retorts with the usual, I'm not that way, response, but Irene dismisses that excuse with, Well, I am. As in, they're both primarily attracted to women, but somehow they fell in love with Sherlock. 
Irene isn't one to get these sorts of things wrong. She's an expert of sorts on human sexuality. She knows what she sees. John stands there in silence, not in denial, but in defeat. As in, oh, she got me. Another point of Irene Adler that relates back to Sherlock is her passcode. As we all remember, Irene's passcode for her phone was sure, which makes more sense in this clip. You could have chosen any random number and walked out of here today with everything you've worked for. But you just couldn't resist it, could you? I've always assumed that love is a dangerous disadvantage. Thank you for the final proof. Everything I said, it's not real. I was just playing the game. I know. And this is just losing. The numbers for sure on a telephone are 7437. Now where else does this number appear? Oh right, that's John's pin! Thank you to Tumblr user Holy Fred Get It for first spotting this one. And even if he's in love with Sherlock and Sherlock is in love with him, nothing's happening between them. So John instead dates a string of women, women who aren't really that important to him. The women are even angry at him for putting Sherlock above them. They outright say it, even hinting that Sherlock and John are a couple. Really sorry. You know, my friends are so wrong about you. Hmm? You're a great boyfriend. Okay, that's good. I mean, I always thought I was great. Now, Sherlock Holmes is a very lucky man. Ah, uh, Jeanette, please. No, I mean it. It's heartwarming. You'll do anything for him. And you can't even tell your girlfriends apart. No, no, I'll do anything for you. Just tell me what it is I'm not doing. Tell me. Don't make me compete with Sherlock Holmes. I'll walk your dog for you. I, I, I've said it now. I'll even walk I don't dog. have a dog. No, because that was the last one. Okay. Jesus. I'll call you. No. Okay. So John puts Sherlock above everything, and when Sherlock <laughs> dies, John is broken. Heartbroken. Heartbroken. Um, there were times I didn't even think you were human, but let me tell you this, you were the best man, uh, the most human, human being that I've ever known, and no one will ever convince me that you told me a lie. Of all the souls I have encountered in my travels, his was the most human. And then he found Mary. There's always something about Mary, huh? To make this video shorter, she manipulated John and lied to him. But John still stays with her because, I guess, he may not shave for Sherlock Holmes. I don't shave for Sherlock Holmes. But he sure loves his beard. Oh yeah, and let's not forget the thigh touch. I don't mind. You don't mind what? An 11-way orgy? A prostate exam? Male-to-male -male casual touches? Now how about the creators? Some people question John Locke because the creators have constantly said that John and Sherlock are not gay lovers and that John is straight and Sherlock is some asexualish thing. Of course, these guys are notorious for lying about their shows to make the twists even more surprising. Of course, with a twist, well, not really a twist, as big as this, I think they would keep it to themselves. Second of all, co-creator Mark Gatiss is gay. Why would he actively participate in a queer bait this massive? He wouldn't be up for this, queer baiting isn't right. For those of you who don't know, queerbaiting is when a show creates sexual tension or alludes to a gay relationship to attract an LGBT audience but intentionally never sees it through. Why would he do such an awful and destructive thing to our community? So what do you all think? A very strong friendship that'll stay an epic adventure? A pining romance that we'll see develop? One big awful queerbait? Whatever it is, Sherlock is a compelling drama with compelling characters. These characters have shared their ups and their downs together. But are they gay? You decide.